So you've just bought a Samsung Galaxy Note Edge, and you're trying to make some sense out of that crazy strip of pixels lighting up the side. Well, you, my edgy friend, have come to the right place. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is your Edge Screen Lesson from Pocket Now. If you've seen our Galaxy Note 4 versus Note Edge comparison video, lots of this will seem like a rehash. If you don't know what I'm talking about and wish I'd just get on with it, okay then, here goes. Even though the Edge display is integrated into the phone's main panel, the software treats it as though it's an independent screen. That makes the Edge a lot like 2011's Samsung Continuum, but here the added display is much more capable, even when the main screen is turned off. One of the smallest and also most useful enhancements is the night clock. When it's turned on, the Edge screen will show date, time, and current weather conditions at the lowest brightness setting, so dim it won't keep you up at night if you leave the phone on a bed stand. To turn this on, you use the setting screen that we're going to come back to a lot. Just flick up from the bottom of the landing strip to reveal the settings cog, tap on it, and select Night Clock. You can set the start and end times so it only comes on during sleeping hours, and it won't work when the battery is below 15%, which is smart. Sadly, as of press time, there's no way to keep it on constantly. When the screen is on, but the phone is locked, the Edge display shows the Express Me panel customizable side screen that lets you make the Note Edge your own through a bit of digital flair. To customize it, tap the Express Me option in the settings menu and choose one of the panels. Since the out-of-the-box default phrase is pretty dry, you can change it up by tapping the pencil icon and replacing the text. You can even replace it with handwriting and change the animation style layer to top it. If a slogan's not your style, choose the stock animation or any image on the phone to put in its place, including photos you've taken yourself. The selection window shows you which areas of the photo will be included on the Edge display. And pro tip, the Express Me screen scrolls as you tilt the phone for an added touch of fun. Keep in mind that the Express Me text is different from what Samsung calls the personal message. The Express Me text shows up when the phone is locked and the personal message always shows up when the Edge display is unlit. So to change the text, select personal message from the settings menu and edit accordingly. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be a way to change the typeface at this time. In regular unlocked usage, the Edge screen transforms from ornament to utility. All the folders and icons you'd normally put on the home screen can go here instead, freeing up slots for widgets or just wide open space to keep your wallpaper less crowded. Managing what you want on the Edge screen is a little more involved than just dragging icons there, though. Instead, we've got to visit our old friend, the Settings Hamburger, and hit Manage Panels this time. This lets you select which ones you want available. You can choose up to seven, and you can arrange them in whatever order you want using the overflow menu up top. The favorites panel is the first one by default, and you decide which apps you want on it by hitting the edit pencil and moving apps from there. It's a little cumbersome, but stick with it, and soon you'll have a nice collection of favorite apps to jump to at the touch of a thumb. In the future, if you want to edit these, it's a little simpler. Just hit the star button at the top of the favorites panel. The Edge screen normally hides itself if you're inside an app, but it's always just a flick of a thumb away. And keep on flicking to see the other panels you've selected. Some, like the Yahoo News and Twitter tickers, let you pull down to refresh headlines. Most let you tap on an icon at the top to take you to the full screen version of the app. And getting more panels is simple. Just go to the settings cog again, select manage panels, and scroll all the way over to the right to download more from the Galaxy App Store. If you get tired of any one panel, the uninstall option is in the overflow menu above. All the swiping and scrolling here might distract you from the pull tab up top, but don't forget about it because it can make your life a lot easier if you need to find a flashlight in the dark. Same goes if you need a timer, stopwatch, or voice recorder quickly, and there's even a ruler with inches and centimeters. These quick tools aren't editable at this time, but they are simple to use and really handy once you train yourself to remember they're there. Getting back to the shortcuts panel just takes a simple X tap, and clearing the quick tools is just an up swipe away. For all the things you can do with the Edge display, sometimes its best colors shine when it's doing stuff for you. Phone calls on the Note Edge, for example, don't interrupt a game or video as they do on the Note 4. They come in via the Edge screen, so you can dismiss them without leaving the action. Similarly, when you're playing music or a podcast, you can control play, pause, and track skipping from the edge without leaving what you're doing. 
It's similar to the functionality already built into Android's notification shade, but it's got a little more room to spread out on the edge screen. If you want to choose what notifications are shown on the edge, you just head on into Manage Panels again and hit the Edit Pencil on the Briefing panel. It's not labeled, but it's the one with the example notifications on it. Finally, there's the option to flip the screen 180 degrees. Though this is in the edge screen settings, it actually applies to the whole display. Enable it, and now you can flip the phone on its head to get the full edge screen experience, even if you're a lefty. It looks pretty silly, but it works just as well in this orientation, and some Southpaws will doubtless appreciate it. Really, it's just nice to see Samsung thinking about this stuff. The attention to detail that led to the creation of this option also touches most aspects of the edge screen. So if there's a setting you want changed, dig deep into the options menu, and it's probably there. And let us know what tips and tricks you've picked up down in the comments below. As for how useful some of this stuff is, well, check out our full Galaxy Note Edge review video up soon here on YouTube, and watch our Galaxy Note Edge versus Galaxy Note 4 video if you're stuck deciding between notes. Follow Pocket Now on all your favorite social feeds, and please subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss future videos. Most importantly, though, thanks for watching. This has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, living on the edge since sometime last week. We'll see you next time.